Hello all, welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for red and blue teams at Pentester Academy. So in the last couple of videos, we've looked at how to find different processes and you know privilege levels and all of that stuff. So in this video, we will look at how to write your own process token dumper. So we understand that the token is a very, very important part of the process from a security perspective. And we would like to look at what is there in the token and find that information out programmatically. Now I've divided the process token dumper into three videos. In the very first one, we look at the basics, which is the different concepts. So what will you learn? Now, most of us are familiar with Process Explorer's uh, uh, you know, interface. And if you recall, when you double click on any process, you get this little prompt, right? Now, if you look at it, we have so much of information here, the user, the SID, uh, the different groups, flags over here, privileges, whether they are enabled or disabled, etc. Now, using the token dumper, we will actually find all of this information ourselves and actually much more, right? So this would actually be Process Explorer supercharged from a token data perspective. So this is the first thing. Uh, you will look at how to write the program from scratch. And we will also look at something very, very interesting, uh, which would actually be protected processes and understanding how to get information from them. So this is what you're going to learn uh, in this video and let's move forward. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a mind map for explaining the different concepts. Uh, please tweet to us or write to us about feedback about this. This is something new I'm trying out. So let's go ahead. Okay, so the process token dumper. Now, in order to go ahead and find out the token in a process, what do we need to do? Well, step one is to make sure we have the right privileges, right? As we've seen in the last couple of videos. So this is going to include ensuring we at least have SE debug privilege. Now, how would that work? As we've seen before, we can get a handle to our process using get current process. Then we can try to open the token using open process token, get a handle to the token. And from there, we can use get token information to find out if SE debug privileges are available. Now, if SE debug privileges are available, then we can call adjust token privilege to go ahead and enable it if it is disabled. Of course, if the privilege isn't available, then we can basically go ahead and try and request for elevation by using shell execute EX as we saw in the last video. Okay, so assuming we have the privileges required, what is the next step? The next step would be to get the processes handle for which we need token information. How do we do that? Again, open process. Now, this is really where when you try and get a handle to a process, there are multiple options. The first is we can try and just use as much uh, of access we need, right? A very minimal access request. Now, generally what we've seen developers do is just use maximum allowed, right? As, as most as we can get. Now, maximum allowed actually would work in most cases apart from in the case of protected processes, right? And we'll talk about protected processes in, in depth later, but basically when we deal with protected processes, we'll have to ask for much less and just say, hey, why don't you allow us at least to have a handle and query some limited information about this process, right? And that is done by using process query limited information in our request. And as I said, we'll, we'll look at protected processes 
uh, and how to identify them in just a bit. Okay, so now assuming we can open the process, get a handle, the next step is to get the process token handle. Extremely simple, all we have to do is open process token and we can use maximum allowed uh, so that we can basically get as much access as possible. Now, as we've seen in previous uh, videos, there is a ton of information in the token, right? Now, in this video, I'm not going to focus on the specifics of each and every information which we can get. Rather, I'm going to talk about how to dump most of the information and certain important caveats and trips and tricks you should look at. In the next video, we will dive deep into the structures and what they mean. Okay, so how do we go ahead and find all of this from the token itself? Very simple as we've seen by calling get token information. Uh, we, for example, in our example, we will see how to get the token user We're going to look at how to get the token owner and I'm going to show you all of this in a demo. Structures we'll look at later, token primary group, token privileges, right? Very, very important. The token source, the token type, again, very, very interesting. And is the token elevated, which is token elevation? And all of this is very interesting when we look at stuff like token stealing, right? And a lot of other information. We will focus on these, but you have the code, you can go ahead and modify it as you please. So let's go ahead into our VM. Now, as I said in this video, I'm going to focus on running this, showing you some demos. In the next video, we will dive deeper into the code and the structures. Great. So keep in mind that it is always best to create a 64-bit executable when you're running on a 64-bit system. Uh, there are some cases where, you know, getting hold of some structures or getting certain accesses is not possible if you're a 32-bit process and you're trying to get that from a 64-bit process, right? I'm not going to get into the details so soon. You can just take my word for it. And anyway, it's, uh, it's fun running as a 64-bit process, right? <laughs> for what it's worth. So uh, let's actually open up a command prompt. Now, I'm just launching a regular command prompt in the beginning, right? There is no elevation of any kind. This is not an admin prompt. And I'm going to go inside my debug directory where the binary is available. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and run Process Explorer, right? So we can compare notes. I really love all these tools. I uh, I always wish, you know, if, if some of them had been open source, uh, really old versions are open source, but you know, some of those techniques and all are really obsolete. I hope Mark Rasinovich decides to make them open source someday. Great, so here is Process Explorer. Let me pick up uh, one of the processes, right? Let's say, let's actually pick up, do, 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 do. let me actually open up Notepad. Right, let's set up a dummy process. There we go. So Notepad has the process ID, there it is, 4360, right? So I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to put in the process ID, 4360. And if you notice, it immediately says we don't have enough privileges, right? And using shell execute ex, like in the last video, it is requesting for elevation. Let's click yes. Uh, so now we are in an elevated prompt, right? I'm just going to go ahead and relaunch it from an elevated prompt. So now let me, here is an admin prompt. Right, what is the PID again? I'm getting old, 4360. There we go. Let's hit and enter. Okay, 
a ton of information and of course uh, after probably 25 years of evolution we still struggle with the command prompt and how much we can scroll right i'm not going to waste time increasing the scroll buffer and all of that i'm just going to use more okay 4360 pipe to more okay so the very first thing of course we see is the program tries to get se debug privilege which it succeeds in getting and then after that it starts dumping different data structures right from within the token so we are dumping the token user here is the token user sid uh, here is the user type right which is a user sid here is the account name as we can see desktop k70 emvc slash vivek similarly we can dump the token owner uh, the token primary group the different token groups and you can see there are a ton of different token groups in here all of this will get more and more interesting and important as we go through multiple videos right right now just look at it at a very high level that we have a ton of data within the token and we are trying to get all of that information out right here is the interesting part uh, dumping privileges right so if you notice this token seems to have the se change notify privilege pretty much all processes have this and that's about it right there are some other privileges which are available but disabled such as the shutdown privilege the token source is user 32 token type is primary right and of course basically this is not an elevated process so is token elevated is false right it's this plain notepad now let's actually run notepad again but this time around let's actually run it as an administrator i mean this can give us some idea about how things change the moment you give a process higher integrity and privileges okay let's go in here right now you notice we are running as a high integrity process the pid is 7004 okay now let's see what happens of course we aren't really tracing every bit of it but we could find some things now notice something interesting actually you know what why don't i open up another notepad again we can compare this side by side uh, and this time around again this is not running as privileged let me launch another command prompt and let's actually run this non admin notepad in here 5328 okay now this is basically the notepad running just as vivek right i haven't launched it as admin notice something uh let's actually go side by side with the other one oops I apologize. Let's let's go back in here. Okay. Okay. So here's a regular one. We see that dumping token user is uh, the account is Vivek. Token owner is again Vivek. Look at this case here when we run it as admin. The token user is Vivek but the token owner is built in slash administrators, right? Here is where we start to see the differences. Okay, let's actually go all the way down just to the privileges, to the same here. Ooh. Now, all of a sudden, look at this, as expected. I mean, there is nothing unusual here. Now, this is, right visually a very very good reason why we should not run programs like notepad etc as an administrator 
right? As you can clearly see, if by 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 you know some stroke of luck, an attacker manages to compromise a process you are running as an admin, look at the kind of privileges he would have access to, right? He would just have to enable this. That's it. Fantastic. So anyway, you can clearly see the change in privileges. And if you notice here, we actually get token is elevated is true, while over here token is elevated is false. So look at how beautifully now we are able to look at right into the process, see what kind of power the process has, see what is available with it, right? Fantastic. Uh, let me actually close both of these. Okay. So let me relaunch. So now let's actually try and do this with a couple of other processes, right? Let's see what happens. Okay. So now to begin with, we are already seeing that, uh, we are able to find a lot more interesting information than process explorer is actually showing us, right? So if you notice, we were able to find all the groups, uh, the privileges and a lot of other information as well. And we've only parsed some of these fields, right? If you looked at the large number of things available within the token, uh, it's just mind boggling, right? So, the good news is just with a little bit of code, you can actually find a lot of common things. For example, Process Explorer can find as well. That's great, right? Because when I conduct classes, a lot of people seem to look up to Process Explorer as some kind of a god. Uh, when in reality, you can find all of this stuff out yourself as well, right? It's a brilliant tool, but we can do the same thing. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, now let's actually pick up a couple of interesting processes, right? Let's pick up processes from different usernames. So let me go ahead and sort this by username. I'm just going to decrease some of the columns here, remove some of the columns. Okay. So we have already gone ahead and dumped for, you know, username Vivek. Let's actually do for local service, right? Let's pick this one up. SVC host 1516. Let's see what happens. 1516. Fair enough. We were able to dump all the details. Great. Let's actually pick up this one over here. Uh, okay. Let's sort by username audio dg.exe, let's say 2976. Fair enough. Seems like we were able to get information. So this was NT authority local service. Just go into network service, right? 6344. Again, success let's pick up system and in system let's actually first pick up search indexer 1760 fair enough success so looks like we are even able to find token details of system processes right is really all there is over here the windows manager let's let's pick Let's pick on the Windows Manager, 1012. Fair enough, success again. So if you think about it, uh, with, with just a reasonable amount of code, looks like we are pretty much able to look at and dump tokens. And when I say dump at this point, what I really mean is find information in the token from almost any user. Let's actually try something else now. Let's pick up a system process, uh, csrss.exe, right? PID 592. Hmm. Whoa, what just happened? 
So if you notice, we have SE debug privileges, we've enabled it, but open process token says, okay, the handle is invalid. I mean, we should have probably exited in our code before that, but hmm, that is interesting. Let's, let's pick up. The next CSRSS, 672. Huh, exactly the same. So what is really happening here? Why, why? I mean, isn't it the same username? I mean, if we are able to dump one system own process, why not all? Now, the key thing is that in older versions of Windows, this was generally not a problem. But what has happened is, Windows has added a couple of protection mechanisms, right? And the one I'm talking about specifically is protected processes. So if you notice, I have enabled a new column called protection, right? And if you notice for some processes, we actually find some information in here, right? Let's go ahead and sort by this. Here we go. So win init seems to have PS protected signer win TCB light, right? And some of them have anti malware light. Interesting. Now, if we try any of these processes, so the first one is 660. Again, same problem. Now, what are these? Basically, what Windows did is they wanted to ensure that attackers cannot go ahead and inject code and do other arbitrary things with certain important system processes, right? This became very, very important because imagine you have an anti-malware solution. What happens if malware, let's say, injects into it, right? Let's say Metapreter, right? We do a reflective DLL injection, start running code, migrate into the anti-malware process and that's it, you know, uh, game over. So this is really where it is possible to protect some processes from this extremely deep analysis, which other processes could do, right? Uh, which includes injecting into the process, reading memory, writing memory, you know, a lot of other things. Now, how can you make a process protected? Now, unfortunately, it looks like for this, uh, you probably need to be, you know, one of those blessed vendors uh, who Microsoft agrees uh, to go ahead and allow you uh, so that you can sign your processes and enable protection, right? Uh, if you do create process, you can actually pass a flag which allows you to create protected processes, but that would only work uh, if you're one of those vendors and you're using that certificate, right? We will talk about all these uh, early warning drivers and all of that stuff much, much later. I don't want to complicate too many things at this stage. Uh, but at this point, all we need to remember is if processes are protected, we really cannot get an extremely, uh, you know, kind of all powerful access to it. So what do we do? So... This is really where I have my open process call where I say maximum allowed. Now what I'm going to do is if this fails, I would assume this is a protected process. And then I'm actually going to go ahead, as I mentioned in the slide, say process query limited information, right? So all I'm saying now is give me an extremely limited bare bone access to this process with which I can find some really trivial things which in no way compromises the security of this process, right? So now let me go ahead and recompile the solution. So now what happens is if maximum allowed is uh, disallowed, then we do an additional try with process query limited information. So let's see what happens now. Same 660. And there you go, right? we are able to dump out all of that information and we can do that for any of these protected processes. So let's pick up 592 as an example.
try it again we are able to go ahead and you know look at different things in the token uh, and you can try it out for all of the others as well it would work perfectly fantastic so what have we learned here we can look at a lot of token information across the system for every process the key thing is of course first you would require higher privileges run from elevation and number two for protected processes try and only request for uh, you know extremely bare bone access right as i said limited query information and once you do that you can find interesting things about them as well fantastic so i i hope you enjoyed this video uh, as i said we are using windows 10 so this is the latest and greatest please let me know what you thought about the mind map i'm extremely curious uh, i hope this helps and below in the link to the video you will have access where you can download print this mind map and do all of that as well so i'm really curious to know what you guys think about it that's all guys i know it's been a long video in the next video we will go into more in-depth analysis and look at some of those structures within the token what they mean and why are they interesting to us thank you have a great day ahead